Hello viewers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will be continuing with my discussion on short forms of oral literature and that is on proverbs as well as on riddles. I have done a previous video on the first short forms of oral literature and that is tongue twisters and puns. So I think that is the most immediate video that I did before this one. So you can also check it out on my YouTube channel so that you get to consolidate together the all the four forms of oral literature. Again, at the comment section, I will put the link to the first video on the first two forms, short forms of oral literature. Now, in this lesson, we are going to discuss some proverbs and riddles. We will start with proverbs and uh, definition. Proverbs are short, pithy sayings that are normally in general use, stating a general truth or a piece of advice. Here on the table are the distinguishing features of proverbs. And the first distinguishing feature is that proverbs are short and terse. They are concise and precise in the phraseology and the wordings. In most cases, proverbs can just be a one-line sentence. Number two, proverbs use bold and striking imagery from the environment that people are quite aware of. Number three, proverbs normally state general uh, truths in the society. It is uh, when a proverb is said, then it is something that people will attest to, a fact that many will agree with. Then lastly, some proverbs have two parts. The first part being proposition and the other part being completion. An example is here in the various examples of Proverbs and that is the first one. Hari, Hari has no blessings. So that proverb has two parts. The first part, Hari, Hari, which is the proposition and then the second part, has no blessings is the completion. Again, on the second column, we have the various functions of a proverb. And the first function is that a proverb has aesthetic value. Proverbs add some beauty to language that is spoken language. Number two, Proverb has reflective function in that it expresses a, pe a people's philosophy of life. It uh, brings to the fore the culture, the traditions, and the cher cherished norms of given communities in which they appear. The third function is that proverbs are used in so socialization. They're used in social interactions and to socialize a people. Number four, a proverb can be used to summarize a situation. And uh, especially in narratives, a proverb can be used to summarize a whole situation in a few words. Lastly, if you want to know about a people, the culture, the history, you look at their proverbs. So proverbs can be used as the cultural as well as historical records. Down here I've given some of the examples of uh, proverbs. The first one that I used to illustrate the two parts in some proverbs, that is the proposition 
and completion. Hari Hari has no blessings. As well as another example here is look before you leap. As we move to the other short form of oral literature viewers, I would like to thank you very much, my subscribers, for the support that you've continually given to this channel. The channel cannot be wherever it is without your support. So I'm deeply indebted to you. Again, to those who are new here, kindly hit onto the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that anytime we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. Fast forward to riddles, definition. Riddles are questions or statements that are intentionally phrased with an intention of requiring ingenuity in ascertaining its answer or meaning. So riddles are always deliberate statements or deliberate questions. And they are put or phrased in a certain way that a given candidate or a person must really tap into their wits, must be creative in order to come up with their solutions and meanings. There is some deliberate effort that must be on someone to solve them. Uh, riddles are normally presented as a play and uh, there is always the stages of what we call a riddling process. Very fast, let us go through the various stages in a riddling process and the first in that uh, riddling process we have the challenge and here is where the challenger that is the person who normally poses the riddle the challenger requests to pose uh, the riddle here is where we can have something like i have a riddle that is an example of the challenge we can also have riddle riddle then we have the response and at this second stage the respondent the respondent that is always this person who is required to solve the riddle normally grants the challenger the, perm the permission to go ahead and pose the riddle that is where we can have statements like riddle come the third stage we have the posing of the riddle itself. Here is where after the challenger said riddle, riddle, the respondent has said at the point of the response, riddle come, then the challenger decides to now pose the riddle. An example could be a small woman cooks better than your mother. So that is an example, a probable riddle that the challenger can pose at this point. From there, we now move to the attempts. The respondent now try to bring to the fore the solutions to the riddle. So if at this point the respondent gives the correct solution, then the riddling process comes to an end. In an event that uh, the respondent fails to give the correct solution to the riddle, then the challenger demands for a prize. Maybe the respondent can decide to give the challenger a city or maybe some prize at this point. Once the prize is given and the challenger ultimately accepts the prize, the challenger then gives the correct answer to the riddle. And that is where we have the solution. So like in our example, a small woman cooks better than your mother, the solution could be a bee. 
Again, we have various features and functions of uh, riddles, and I have divided them into two columns. Uh, the first column is for features. So one feature of a riddle is that a riddle uses figurative language. There is a lot of use of metonymy, similes, metaphors, synecdoche, and other figures of speech. Again, some riddles use sound patterns. There is sometimes use of alliteration where there is the repetition of initial consonant sounds in words that appear in that riddle. There could also be assonance and at the same time onomatopoe. Uh, third, thirdly, riddles also use imagery from the local environment. There could be reference made to birds, to animals, or sometimes even to the modern technology. Like for instance, there is a riddle that has been framed as a question, uh, as a statement, and it uh, states that I am a person who when I speak, the whole world listens. So that could be a television or a radio. So the imagery in this case is that of modern technology. Number four, riddles are also short, terse, and puzzling. And in a way, they are cryptic. They are, crypt they are cryptic uh, to mean that their meaning is uh, kind of hidden. And just by looking at the statements that have been used or the questions that have been used, one could not easily arrive at the solution. So it requires some uh, wits to arrive at the correct solution. Lastly, riddles, riddling sessions are normally conducted between two parties. So one party, we have the challenger, who poses the riddle, then we also have the respondents, the audience. The audience can be an individual, and at the same time, the audience can also be a group. Lastly, let us look at the various functions of a riddle. And we have a riddle being educative. A riddle can be used to entertain. A riddle can also be used as a warm-up session to storytelling. And at the same time, a riddle can help to create awareness of historical as well as cultural heritage. As we come to the end of this video, there is just one uh, observation that I would like to make. And that is on the functions of proverbs. In most cases, I have seen candidates bring about entertainment as a function of proverbs. So there are certain proverbs that a candidate is likely to meet in the, the questions. And looking at the nature in which it has been phrased or what is being communicated, most proverbs are really not for entertainment, but they are there to educate, they are there to warn, and they are there for the functions that we've been given. But rarely do proverbs entertain. Though in some cases, entertainment can also pass as a function, but it should be in specific situations. Viewers, thank you very much. Let us meet next time.